All right, so picking back up where we left off, this um, detailed map of the different climatic regions is really um, going to show a more detailed view of different areas within the bigger climatic regions that actually get um, different uh, levels of precipitation. <clears throat> so um, some of the the interesting things to look at from a rangeland management perspective is here through the eastern Great Basin, um, so through Utah and then um, uh, northern Arizona. So this region really is uh, quite interesting because they get these pockets of increased precipitation um, and they um, also get uh, a lot of forested areas. So this is where we start to see a lot of pinyon juniper woodlands and a lot of juniper encroachment as well. So if you compare this to um, a map that I'll show you guys later in the week, um, this is where we actually start to see those pinyon juniper areas is in areas with greater precipitation. So the rain shadow effect drives a lot of the climatic factors that we have. And the best example of this is the Great Basin. So um, the Great Basin is known for only getting between 8 to maybe 16 inches of precipitation a year. Um, and some regions of the Great Basin even less than 8 inches a year. So, and the big reason is because it has um, the rain shadow effect on all sides of it. So the rain shadow effect, like we talked about um, last week in class, is where we start to see storm systems and moisture building off of the ocean and then moving with the prevailing winds onto the land mass. And as the storm system um, meets the increasing elevation, it has to actually lose a bunch of weight to get up over the top of these mountain ranges. So it loses that weight by raining or by dumping precipitation. So we, what we end up with is a really um, high or higher precipitation, uh, lush area on the windward slope. And then there isn't too much energy left in those storms. So when it comes over the leeward slope, there isn't a whole lot of moisture left. Therefore, it creates a rain shadow effect. So relative to the Great Basin, this is important because um, the Great Basin is really blocked by the coastal mountains, then the Sierra Nevadas to the west, and then the Rocky Mountains to the east. So um, you get that blocking on several um, fronts really limits the amount of storm systems that can get to the Great Basin. Another climatic effect is the Hadley cell effect, and this is where we see a circulation at the equatorial regions up to about 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So these circulation patterns um, create these little Hadley cells to where we get um, the sun actually warming areas in the or areas along the equator because that is going to be the region that gets the greatest amount of sunshine on a consistent basis. That warm air is going to rise to allow cooler air to come in underneath it. And that act actually um, is going to dispel out and then up um, to the north or down to the south, creating these prevailing winds. So the Hadley cell effect really creates bands of moist or dry zones. And this happens along the world. So again, here's looking at a profile of the globe. Our equatorial region is here at zero degrees um, latitude. And as we get that, those increasing um, UV rays warming the air along the equatorial region, it's lifting and creating winds that are going to go to the north and to the south. So we get areas um, just, uh, just above the equatorial region with really wet summers and dry winters. A little further north, um, you get subtropical high um, areas that are going to be dry in all the seasons. And this is really where we see like the Saharan Desert falling. And then um, move a little higher than that, you get uh, wet winters and dry summers. This is where a lot of our precipitation here in the western U.S. is a result of. And then you get to polar and subpolar areas as you move more towards the poles. And again, this happens um, uh, 
moving on the south latitudes as well. So as we look at this global map um, of mean annual precipitation over a 30-year period, or 29-year period, um, we can see the areas that get pretty consistent rainfall. So between 200 and 500 centimeters or millimeters um, is going to be a lot of the Canadian and through the western part of the U.S., also a lot of area through Russia and uh, uh, Central Asia as well. So that, thinking back to that Hadley cell effect, here's our equatorial region. That area that creates dry climate zones year-round is really what um, drives um, that plus poor, poor soils drive this really dry desert region through the Saharan desert that doesn't have the ability to grow very much forage at all. So some of the other land effects that can alter climate um, and so, or consequently um, affect vegetation production is, first of all, areas that tend to be around large bodies of water. So this could be areas on the coast or areas around large lakes to where those lakes are creating their own weather systems. So a good example of this is actually the Great Lakes. Um, where they get lots of wind and um, a lot of other weather patterns associated with that lake area. And this leads to, um, or this in addition to the um, rain shadow effect, is really leads to a lot of the central part of countries or continents that um, are going to be pretty dry. And um, unless they have large bodies of water in the center of them. So this is a good example of this. Again, is the Great Basin because it has rain shadow effects on the west and to the east as well. So if we go to um, this link, I'm hoping it's going to work. There we go. Um, we can actually see this Hadley cell effect and these atmospheric um, winds take place. So this is a satellite uh, cam. And this, you can see along the equator here, we're getting lots of um, cloud cover and lots of air that is moving because it's heat being heated up by the UV lights from the sun. And then we're starting to get weather patterns and those Hadley cell um, effects to the north and to the south. So this area along the equator is going to get a bunch of moisture and then it's going to blow up or um, down into the uh, northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere. And as you can see here through the Saharan Desert, North, um, North Africa, it's a very, very large continent. There's a large amount of land that isn't close to precipitation at all. Therefore, that creates a lot of rain shadow effects um, in addition to um, having really, really poor soils. So that land tends to be very degraded and uh, doesn't have a lot of potential to grow anything. All right, so switching back to our lecture here, let's just summarize um, this climate lecture. So just keep in mind that climate is really um, dictating patterns of precipitation in addition to temperature. And those two major characteristics are going to drive the potential to get lots of vegetation in certain rangeland regions. Climate can be affected by geography. So orographic barriers such as the rain shadow effect, topography as well, mountain ranges, um, as, as well as big uh, lakes and bodies of water. And then um, climate can also be affected by the altitude. So how high up and um, above sea level certain types of rangeland are. Because as you move up in elevation, the amount of frost-free days or the growing period that you have for certain amounts of vegetation decreases. And then, of course, our Ladley, or Hadley cell effects and the continental effects that we talked about, such as those big bodies of water in, um, in the center of continents. All right, so that uh, ends the lecture about climate, and uh, we will pick up with defining some more rangeland regions 